Good afternoon, Mr. Radfield. Good afternoon. Mr. Radfield, you claim to have been forced into this act of fraud, pressured into it by my client, Mrs. Metcalf. Is that correct? It is, and as I A previously... simple yes or no answer will suffice. Thank you. And you've made a statement with the police to this effect and testified to it in court. Is that also correct? Yes. It was you that opened the joint bank accounts, wasn't it? Yes. And you that purchased the mobile phones that you used to keep in touch with Mrs. Metcalf? Yes. In your original statement to the police, you said it was Mrs. Metcalf who purchased the mobile phones. I did. I lied. You lied? Are you in the habit of lying? Uh, I'm no liar, but uh, Sally said that I had to be the one to set it all up because of her being in the public eye. Um, she was the mayor. Mm. So you purchased the mobile phones, and it was you that set up the joint bank account, and it was you that made the bookings in the hotels where you had alleged liaisons with Mrs. Metcalf. Yes. And you seriously expect the court to believe that Mrs. Metcalf forced you to complete those tasks. She said that if I didn't do it, she would report me to the police for sexual harassment. I was grieving for my wife, and she, she, she preyed on me. She, she, she targeted me and, and made me do it all. Sally Metcalf knew exactly what she was doing, and I had no idea. Going back <clears throat> to the joint accounts for one second, the joint account that you set up. That we both signed for, and, and her signature is on the bank form, and handwriting experts have confirmed that it's hers. Look, Sally was behind all of this. I, I'm just a victim. Oh, lies! This is all lies! Is that calf? No, I can't sit here and listen to this. Sally. I mean, look at him! He's loving every minute of Counsel, it. Counsel, please, could you have a word with oh, your client? This is a joke. Mrs. Metcalf. No, I am the victim. Sally. This is a suitable place to adjourn. Ms. Martin, I suggest you use this adjournment to have a little chat with your client. We'll meet back tomorrow. Court rise. It's all right. It's early days. I've still got to finish the cross-examination and we've got our evidence to give you. It's just... You'll get your chance to tell your side of the story. The truth. You will win, Sally. You've done nothing wrong. But you must keep your emotions in check. No more outbursts. It doesn't look good to the jury. Right, I'll let you two have a moment together. I'm going to do the plan for tomorrow. Thanks. Sally. Sally. Sorry. It's really important that you take this in. It can't appear that you don't know what's going on. Sorry, it's just... Tim was really thrown by what Duncan said. He's doubting me. Mm. He's got in his head, hasn't he? Well, he won't be doubting when we present our evidence, the proof. So tomorrow, we're going to go through the paper trail, the physical evidence. So burner phones, receipts. Now, we'll comb through your credit card statement several times, and we can dispute all of Duncan's claims of the times he said the two of you were together. But it is still very much his word against yours, unless we can prove otherwise. Well, this one's my birthday. Mm. And Duncan claims he was at a hotel with you and he's got a receipt to prove it. I wasn't with him. Where were you? I don't know. I'm sorry. I mean, I suppose when you get to our age, birthdays aren't the big celebration they once were, especially when you're married to somebody like Tim. You see, that's just going to fuel the case for the prosecution. So what? Tim doesn't bother with your birthday. Duncan claims he took you to a hotel and you can't prove otherwise. I wasn't with him, Paula. I know I wasn't. You've got to believe me. It's not me. You've got to convince. Sally, we have to have all our bases covered. Do you understand? Yes. Right. So, rack your brains and remember where you were for your birthday. And if I can't? 